You know, you had mentioned that uh, the finish earlier in the show, and I forget the exact sequence, but it was like it was like lariat power bomb, and then he goes up top for the big splash. And he starts climbing up that rope, and it was exactly like you said at the start of the show. The, the people aren't supposed to, to cheer. They're only supposed to clap. Right. But, man, he starts climbing, and they're going, oh. And then he jumps off that thing, and they're, they're like, screaming, and he gets the pin. And it was like a brief glimpse into what is going to be the future, about a month from now, when fans are allowed to boo and cheer again. And it was right. so awesome. I mean, it was awesome to hear it again, but it was also awesome that, you know, they were so into that spot that they forgot that they weren't supposed to make any noise and they just couldn't help themselves. But I wanted right. to get your thoughts on, you know, I've heard from people that have, they, they, they kind of like the clapping because the fans are clapping like continuously throughout the match for spots and they'll applaud this, they'll applaud that because they can't cheer. So they they applaud and... and you know, I, I've, I've talked to people that they, they sort of like it to a degree because there's kind of an interaction with the crowd like 100% of the time during the match. And obviously, I think everybody wants cheering to come back because that's even better. But what are your thoughts on what's going to happen? I mean, do you feel that the, the clapping throughout the match is going to stay and will be adding cheering and booing on top of that and it'll be maybe even a better reaction than we got bef- than before the pandemic? I think it's going to be a slow process that, and and again, when it first started and fans were just clapping, uh, no one liked it. The television producers didn't like it. They experimented with uh, an electronic system that allowed people to bring noise. And they tried it a couple of times and realized it didn't sound good. So they stopped it. Um, and and fans have gotten used to it now, so it's going to it's going to take a little bit a little bit to unwind. Uh, it's going to start next month with shows at Cork and Hall with special sections. Um, so if you if you want to buy a ticket, and I think all the tickets have been sold, but if you want to buy a ticket for the cheering section, you'll still have to wear a mask, but you'll be able to cheer. And I think that there will be some. Uh, discomfort with it at first but i think eventually those sections will be expanded and people will get back to what they used to do and i have a feeling that clapping will be a part of it as well because some people especially at first won't want to make vocal cheers so you will get some vocal and some clapping and i think there will be more sound overall where it hurts is matches where fans can't boo because they don't want to clap when the house of torture is doing their terrible things, they want to boo. So, so you just get silence and it's rotten. <laughs> um, but I've, I've said that I said people in the absence of being able to make vocal noise, they either approve or disapprove with the sound from their hands. So if they're, if they like what you're doing and they like what they're seeing, they're going to clap. And if they don't, they're not going to make any sound. So take the absence of sound as, as like a boo. I'm trying to put a spin on it. I'm trying to yeah, make sure, it sound yeah. good. Because it sucks. Yeah. So I think it, it eventually over time. Now, DDT did it yesterday, and uh, they had announced that a while ago that they were going to allow cheering to start at, at whatever you know the event was yesterday that they, they had it. And fans were remarking online. I was looking at some of the Twitter feedback that they liked it, and it was, it was refreshing to hear because the DDT is a product that has – you know, specialty chants and cheers and different uh, elements related to the guys that are in the ring. So, um, yeah, it's going to be just like all of it. We, Chris and I said, uh, this was going back maybe a year, that we are going to have to probably see, we're going to have to do videos to re-educate the fans in Japan of when to cheer and when to boo. (laughs) Just (laughs) like, it's okay. You can make noise now. It's all right. Um, the government has said it's okay for, for, for you all to bank noise. Here's what you do. <laughs> because You know, you, you they, mentioned the, that, the but Japanese what people, what God is it like? Go ahead. I mean, the Japanese people, God bless them, they follow the rules. Yeah. And they, you so you have to tell them to stop following the rules. There's not, uh, you know, wise-ass well, American fans changed. Uh, that are sneaking in. You get a little bit of that, and that's part of Osaka's charm, by the way, is they've always been – 
they're a little hipper town, so they've always kind of broken the rules. But there were a couple times where somebody shouted at, you know, heckled one of the wrestlers or something, and people turned around like, ooh, what? Ooh. Yesterday in Nagano, we had one guy who was sitting in the higher reaches of the stands, and he was hollering a couple different times during the show, but nobody shouted him down as had happened in the past. Hmm. Is there a degree of of culture shock when you when you come from you know doing shows in America, Forbidden Door, and New Japan Strong tapings with fans, and there's like no restrictions when you do those shows, and then you know you fly to Japan, and then you have all of these restrictions. I mean, you've you've probably gone back and forth enough that it's probably a pretty quick transition. But I could imagine for you know maybe a Tom, for example, that you know this is first time over there as a wrestler. It's probably got to be pretty jarring at first yeah, it does take a little bit of getting used to no doubt about it and i've been back and forth so many times that i am used to it you know of course the biggest adjustment that i have to make is that i have to wear a mask during doing commentary which i hate for obvious reasons because it's difficult to uh breathe at times and i also sound like i'm announcing with my hand over my mouth uh, i go back and i watch the shows on access and i just I hear it from an audio clarity perspective, and I get very frustrated with it. Um, but I understand it's a it's a TV Asahi rule because of TV Asahi being a uh, television networks are not independently owned. They're all basically elements of the government involved in television. Uh, television is very regulated here in Japan. So they very much so adhere to the rules, and, and it will be that way until – any masking restrictions are are lifted so yeah it's it's it takes a little bit for guys to get used to but those that embrace it and play with it like kenta who and and the guys who try to get their own style of clap going you know and you compete against tanahashi and you know let's go ace is the overwhelming clap pattern and then you try to put your own in and then you have a little back and forth it's it's the ebu spot done with clapping it's a lot of fun Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.